So when you press your brake pedal, you've noticed the brake pedal is much harder to press. Maybe it doesn't travel as far as it used to. So that often indicates a problem within the braking system. But what is the problem? How does the braking system actually work? So most modern cars have a brake booster, a brake servo that amplifies the pedal pressure that you're putting on it. And it really just helps you to stop the car more effectively. It gives you a lot more control over the braking. Without the brake booster itself, you're pretty much controlled the pad on the disc itself and it's very much an on or off affair it's very very firm it's not as controllable and with brakes it's an important aspect of your car you want to be able to stop the car in emergency situations and even in non-emergency situations it's often nice to slow up the car and allow your passengers to get out without having to dive out and roll on the pavements let's just look at some of the typical problems associated with the brake system and the potential causes of that hard brake pedal and i really just want to give you an overview of how the brake pedal system works in a modern car So the brake booster itself is usually a large flying saucer shaped disc. There's a diaphragm in the center of that. There's a vacuum on one side. So the vacuum is obviously pulling it that side. The other side is exposed to higher pressure atmospheric air. So as you press the brake pedal, a little bit of opening happens on the vacuum side. So instead of being pulled, the vacuum is starting to weaken and that's pushing the diaphragm. So that's really amplifying the brake pedal pressure that you are putting. So there's various different nuances and systems that manufacturers have used to achieve this. But in its basic form, you've got the vacuum side and a higher pressure side, and you create interference on the vacuum side by pressing the brake pedal. So as that vacuum drops, your push is accelerated and you've got a lot more force that's going out onto the brake system itself. So obviously when you have a vacuum, there's a lot of scope for problems. If that vacuum starts to leak, you no longer have that vacuum so there's less far for the brake to actually travel when you press the brake pedal and that can be the cause of a hard brake pedal you need the engine to be running in order to have that vacuum so you've probably noticed if you start the engine with your foot on the brake pedal the brake starts off extremely firm and then as that vacuum starts to build up inside that brake booster itself the brake pedal will move further and you'll have much more control over the brake pedal so what are the typical causes for a hard brake pedal or a hard to push brake pedal. So the obvious thing is the brake booster itself. It started to wear out. It's not holding a vacuum on the vacuum side. There's a leak. Some of the valves associated with the braking system have started to wear and it's not retaining the air pressure correctly and that will start to degrade the performance of the braking system until eventually you've got no assistance whatsoever on the braking system. And that can be relatively expensive in some cars to actually get fixed and repaired. In other cars, it's cheap. There's often parts in breakers yards that you can use just to save a bit of money. But often if you buy a worn one, you're waiting for that problem to crop up much sooner. So you've got a car that's say 10 years old and you're replacing it with a brake booster that is five years old, you've typically only got about five to seven years life left in that brake booster if it's been well looked after and well maintained and if it's not been damaged as it's been removed and refitted to your car. So it's the sort of component I would usually recommend people go out and buy new, buy quality. If you buy cheap, you often buy twice when it comes to brake components. You've got a check valve that prevents air from entering the brake booster. So if that check valve is started to leak, that's going to affect the pressure within the brake booster itself. So obviously that's much cheaper to replace than the brake booster itself. So some cars have a vacuum pump that generates the vacuum. Some use a power steering pump in order to achieve the brake assistance that you get when you press the pedal down. But if those pumps have started to fail, that's obviously going to mean it's much harder to press the brake pedal and it's going to be harder to stop the car. So it's just good to investigate your car, what type of brake servo assistance or brake booster are they actually using and how does it work if you understand how it works that goes a long way to helping you to diagnose the areas that are typical problems for it the connections to the vacuum side is generally a hose so the scope there for the hose to split to degrade start to leak the 
clips that hold the hose at each end, they can sometimes split. You're often talking about slow hissing noises that you get from this where it's trying to create a vacuum, but it's not quite achieving that, or you've got just a partial vacuum. So that tends to manifest itself as trouble pressing the brake rather than a really hard brake pedal. You're noticing that the brake pedal is firmer than it used to be. So that can often indicate a problem with the hoses that feed the vacuum chamber or the vacuum side of the brake servo. So the brake pedal itself may need adjustment. So I have had instances where people have put new mats in the car and the mats have been so thick, it stopped the brake from fully traveling and they've not had the same amount of braking force that they had before. So simple little things like that can be addressed, but just make sure that you've got the full range of motion in the brake pedal itself, and then that is transmitted to the brake system and to the master cylinder. So the master cylinder is obviously the thing that takes the pressure from your brakes from the brake booster and converts that into hydraulic pressure because as this brake fluid is pressed, that is what pushes against the brake pads and causes the brake pads to push against the discs and creates the braking. So if that system is starting to fail, it's gonna make it much harder to brake. So if you've noticed your brake pedal starting to firm up, that can be an indicator of a problem that needs to be addressed. Don't take chances with your brakes. They're important safety features on your car. I can't emphasize that enough. If you're just a DIYer, make sure that someone qualified and who understands brake systems is there to assist you and support you in replacing parts or take it to a qualified mechanic and get them to address the problem with your brake system. It would help if you can indicate to them where it's starting to firm up, if it's all the time, if it's a problem that started to degrade, whether it only happens when the car is cold after you've been doing a lots of braking, is that typically the time when you start to get the brake pedal firming up and it's hard to press? Because all those symptoms can help to diagnose where the actual problem is in the brake system. So I hope this video has been useful to you. It's just giving you an overview of the potential problem areas that cause a hard brake pedal. And please boot the like button because that really does help us to get out there. Thanks for watching. I've lined this video up for you if you're interested in getting the best performance from your car. Thanks for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned.